World Islamic Scholars Addressing International Quran Conference Message From Islamic World Leaders Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah ar rahman ar rahim Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Dear brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum. This is Gabe Ar-Romani. I wanted to share a message, a message of peace, a message of, uh, of intellectual capacity, inshallah, for the whole world, a, mes a message of wisdom, a message of the hearts, inshallah, for the organizers of ISM, for the people attending uh, the International Quran Conference that will take place in February 13 and 14 in Calicut, Kerala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first and foremost bless you all and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with beneficial knowledge and knowledge and love of the Quran, the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, His words, the verbatim message that was sent to mankind as the last message to be revealed to mankind, the message of Tawheed, the message of the Aqeedah that was from the day that Adam was created till the last man, the last prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and till the day of judgment. Dear brothers and sisters, I wanted to speak to you today about the Qur'an standing the message of time, the only book, and that is different than all the other books that were revealed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We know very well that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the Torah, the Injil, the Zabur, the messages of many, many different prophets that were mentioned in the Qur'an and some that were not mentioned. However, these books were entrusted to the prophets and to the people after them. Now we find, subhanAllah, if we look into the history of religions, we find that religions have a core and they have a universal message. However, we find that this message was changed throughout time by pressure from culture, by pressure from the hawa and desires of people, by pressure from different, you know, be it materialistic, be it political, you name it. As the last message, the last testament, the final testament sent to mankind, the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself took it upon himself and said that he is the one who has revealed this Quran and he is the one who will protect this Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Inna nahnu nazzalna dhikr wa inna lahu lahafidun. That it was indeed us who revealed this dhikr, this Quran, and it's upon us to preserve that, to preserve this message. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator of the heavens and the earth, he is the one now who said he is he will present uh, preserve this message. Now this is just someone can say, well, that's nice, that's fine, but how? The thing is, the proof is there, brothers and sisters. We don't just take uh, statements out of you know nowhere. No, the proof is there. First and foremost, the Quran stands the test of time. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has revealed the Quran through the angel Jibreel alayhi salam to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. It was verbatim. It was by words. It was Allah Subhanahu wa Taala instructing Jibreel and Jibreel instructing Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam in turn he would instruct his Sahabas. The Qur'an was preserved by the memory of those around the Prophet ﷺ. That is why no one could ever tamper with his message. Now we find, wow, well, that's fine, how, how can we prove that? We find that from that time till today, millions of people have memorized the Qur'an. Millions! There is no book, or forget about book, no article, 
no piece or manuscript that has ever been memorized in such a way. Someone can say, no, but I know someone or I've heard of someone on the internet or there's someone who memorized the Gita, for example, some smart boy somewhere in India. That's fine. However, we are talking here not about an exception. We are talking here, this is the default. The, the, the Ummah has now over 10 million Hufad. 10 million people has memorized the Quran. We're talking about in this time. Now, if we were to combine all the people who have memorized the Quran, you're talking about millions, if not hundreds of millions of people who have memorized the Quran. How come Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that وَلَقَدْ يَسَّرْنَا الْقُرْآنَ لِذِكْرِ فَهَلْ, فهل مِنْ مُنْدَكِرِ يعني Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that indeed we have made this easy for you to remember. This Quran is easy to remember. So it's not just me saying it, it's not just him saying it, it's not just you saying it. Allah is saying it and proving it. A person from India, a person from China, a person from America, a person from Canada, a person from Italy, all of them can memorize the Quran. Why? Is it because of their mental aptitude? No, it's not because of that. It is because the Quran itself. It is because the Quran itself is divine and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who created us and created our minds has made our minds in such a way that we recognize that we are able to absorb and to remember this divine speech and it doesn't happen I say that again with full confidence and it is a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that it doesn't happen to anything else other than the Quran not even music not even movies not even whatever bring anything you want from this world that anyone can stand and be on par with the Quran. And that is why, brothers and sisters, the Quran stood the test of time. The Quran was never changed. That is why we Muslims are holding so dearly to it. That is why our children, our babies, from very young age, they start reciting. That is why you see them immerse, you know, submerging themselves in the Quran. That is why our parents, our grandparents, our elders are always reminding us with the Quran to stick to the Quran. To remember. And that is why it's an honor for us. It's not the Quran that receives an honor from us. It is us that receive an honor from being and being called amongst the Hufad, which is those to guard the Quran. Hafiz, the one who protects and will carry on this message. It's an honor for us. So brothers and sisters, What's the purpose of it? So, okay, the Quran has been preserved. It is miraculous. It is like no other book. There's no other book like the Quran. No other manuscript, no other set of laws, you name it, that humanity has ever come up with like the Quran. Well, it is because the message that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is con uh, conveying to humanity has been preserved. As to how does Allah, your Creator, wants you and I to live our lives. We're not talking just about a, uh, you know, an intellectual endeavor here to read a book. We're talking here about taking action. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has given us the instruction manuals for us to follow. No one can play with it. No one can change it. No political situation, no culture, no nothing can ever press down and ever change the Quran because it is guarded. And because of this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will hold us accountable. And because of this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is expecting you and I to change our lives, to align our lives with the Quran, His holy words, His verbatim. Brothers and sisters, I leave you with this final advice. The Quran is a way of life. The Quran is a relationship. It's not just something to be put on the shelves. It's not just something to be uh, taken when someone dies or something happens, you know, that some people are used in their cultures. No, the Quran is something that you live with every day. However, how much it is, you should never ever leave one day to go by without you interacting with the Quran, without you looking at the Quran, without you trying to read one ayah and understand it and try to implement as much as you can from it brothers and sisters. This is the relationship with the Quran. Because when you have this relationship with the Quran, you're having a relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because this is His speech. You are listening to what He is telling you subhanahu wa ta'ala for you to do. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to benefit this conference. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless those attendees, all the guest speakers, all the respected uh, chairman and uh, guests uh, who are of honor who are you know attending the, meet, the meeting on the conference and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us all and open our hearts to the Quran and his message assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh